<sighs> it's been a long time coming, but Dwayne Johnson has finally gotten his Black Adam film and it is now in theaters. <laughs> Fifteen years is definitely a long time for a comic book film to be in development, but damn it if Dwayne Johnson is nothing if not persistent because he has finally got his wish of playing DC comic book anti-hero Black Adam. Now back in the day, Black Adam debuted as a villain for the DC comic book hero Shazam and has since evolved into more of an anti-hero, which is the direction that this film is taking. Awakened from a tomb after 5,000 years in the fictional Middle Eastern region of Kandak, Black Adam wastes no time taking down anyone who poses a threat to him or at least believes that they can pose a threat to them, and that includes the members of a mercenary group known as Intergang who have long since occupied this region and have the citizens under oppressive rule. Let's get my issues with Black Adam out of the way first, because the film is not without those issues. I feel like for a film that is just clocking in at the two hour mark, it feels a lot longer than it actually is. That's something that I feel is an issue for a lot of comic book films now where they all want to be around two and a half to three hours long and it's not necessary. So it's kind of a shame where Black Adam is right there at the two hour mark and still feeling as long as those other comic book films. And this is due to certain scenes lasting a little too long too many action set pieces that kind of take away from the story and things kind of get a little bit sluggish around the second act and there are times when you can feel legitimately exhausted by what you're watching. We have that over-reliance on CGI and I feel like there are certain times when you're putting so much emphasis on the visual effects in certain scenes and a lot of it does look good but I do wish that we could have taken some of that budget for visual effects that is on display early in the film and applied it to the latter half of the film and have that look a little bit more convincing. The younger members of the Justice Society, Adam Smasher and Cyclone, also feel a little bit underdeveloped in relation to all of the other characters in the film, although I do feel like Noah Centineo as Adam Smasher and Quintessa Swindle as Cyclone have great chemistry and they just display this great wonder of being on the Justice Society team and being superheroes in general. So there is a little bit of give and take in that regard, but I do wish that their backstories were a little bit more fleshed out. Although I did love the cameo for Adam Smasher's uncle, who was Adam Smasher before him in the JSA, and I thought that was really a cute moment in the film. I also wish we had more for Marwan Kanzari to do as Ishmael, because he does kind of represent a member of Intergang who is not necessarily the leader of the whole organization, but he is our main focal point representative for this organization in Black Adam, and I feel like they just don't give him enough to do Although he does come back around the third act, you almost feel like they are forgetting about him to a certain extent. Even with all this in mind, I still ended up really enjoying Black Adam. I think for as much as I talk about there being too much action, a lot of that action still works. A lot of it is still fast paced and energetic and there's a variety to the things that we're seeing from these speeder bike battles that Black Adam is engaging in with members of Intergang to the way they display the powers for the Justice Society because you have characters like Hawkman and Doctor Fate who are just beautifully visualized and you get the sense of them working together as a team and it just working out so well and you're just sort of captivated by a lot of these images and a lot of stuff that feels very much like you're reading a comic book and I think that it's a fine line to doing that in a comic book film and making it work versus not understanding the medium of comics and how to translate that to film and I think for what it's worth Black Adam does this very well more often than not. 
And of course, we have this whole major conflict between the JSA and Black Adam because they have a strict no-killing policy, at least Hawkman does, because he sees what Black Adam is doing with all these mercenaries. He's flash frying them, he's dismembering them, he's throwing them into vehicles as they're exploding, he's blowing up everything in his sight, and Hawkman just has no patience for it. And Black Adam's response is just, I'm just gonna keep killing more people. If the only human beings Black Adam is killing are members of Intergang, why should we care about them? I think that's something that is really focused on in this film, especially in one scene where Sarah Shahi, as Adriana Tomas, talks down Hawkman and the rest of the Justice Society for them coming into Kondok now, as opposed to when Intergang first appeared only because they care about what this superpowered being is doing now that he's been awoken. And I think it's something that, especially with a film that has a cast of predominantly brown people, <laughs> I think that was a fun touch to include in this film. And obviously they don't dive deep into that, but it still plays an important role as we kind of get a sense for what's happening with all of these civilian characters in the film. And I feel like it's great that we have characters like Adriana Tomas and her son and her brother Kareem played by Mohammed Amir who definitely help to define the stakes in Black Adam because it extends to the actual rest of the people in Kondok and they play a large role in the third act of the film which I really appreciated because as far as comic book films are concerned, usually civilian characters just end up being there as people for the heroes to save or be in danger of from villains, and here they're a more active part of the story and what's going on. Of course, if there's any standout in this cast, I would have to say that it is Pierce Brosnan as Kent Nelson, aka Dr. Fate, because this character is incredible. I love that he is a mentor and father figure within the Justice Society, and especially his relationship with Aldous Hodge as Hawkman is just incredible to see play out because he is just bringing his A-game in every scene, and I just had so much fun watching him. And damn it if that outfit isn't the drippiest of drip. They have this man absolutely decked out in blue and gold, and it is just a joy to watch. And him squaring off against Black Adam, and then later on being this voice of reason for Black Adam, is just incredible as far as I'm concerned. As for Dwayne Johnson as Black Adam, I understand him wanting to play this character, and I feel like for every thing people want to say about him being a one-note actor, I feel like this is a character that definitely suits him. You have this great, ominous presence to Black Adam that Dwayne Johnson is bringing, and this whole attitude of, oh, you think you can step to me? I'm going to shut you down. We're not going to have that conversation. And it's just incredible because you still have an arc to the character and you still have some emotional weight to finding out his backstory and learning his motivations. So for what it's worth, I feel like this was something that I'm happy that he got to do because he's wanted, been wanting to do it for a long time. And it was just fun to see him kind of strike that balance between is he a hero, is he a villain? And even by the end of it, we don't really get a clear-cut answer. We also got to talk about the score for this film because I love superhero movie scores and I feel like there are some that are definitely underrated and I hope people walk away from Black Adam and say, damn it if this wasn't a good score because I know the producers were probably looking at Lord Balf and saying, listen, you don't got to do too much with this main theme for Black Adam, just keep it simple. And Lord Balf said, I think the F not. I am going for broke with this. I am going hard. We're going to bring in some strings. We're going to bring in some horns. We're going to get some electric guitars. We're going to get some synths. We're going to get some choirs in there. I am dropping my drawers and slapping my unit on the table and none of you are going to stop me. That's how I felt 
listening to the score and the main theme for Black Adam because that main theme, this is striking a perfect balance between being sinister and heroic in the best possible way. And damn it, if this thing hasn't been on repeat in my car every time I have left the house since I have seen this goddamn film. Between this and a handful of cameos, even though one was obviously spoiled like a whole week before the film even came out, I had a lot of fun with Black Adam. I think even with its problems, it starts strong, kind of trips over itself a little bit in that second act, but it recovers well by the end. And I am excited to see more with this character if this film is successful, and especially more of the Justice Society as well. I think that would be great. And it was just a good time, what can I say? Also, considering the fact that this is a film starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, it feels like they're being deliberately meta by having the gesture of tribute that the people of Kondok would make to Black Adam be a reference to Rockefeller Records. Hey guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you've got your own thoughts or opinions on Black Adam, go ahead and leave a comment in the section below. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the notification bell, share this video with your friends and family, and if you'd like to keep up to date on more at random videos, you can click the subscribe button right over here.